Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode number 45. Today is Friday night, Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2020. Um, Very busy day. Um, If you've been following along, you know that I'm leaving tomorrow morning on a trip to Fresno for the love, uh, the Freestyle Love Jams in Fresno, California. And those are the same people that put on uh, the Super Freestyle Explosion. So tomorrow's going to be a cool show. It's, you know, Lisa Lisa, Stevie B, Johnny O, Cynthia, I think Stacey Q, um, uh, the original Cover Girls, of course, and a few other acts I don't remember offhand. I don't have the flyer open. But it's going to be a great show. I mean, those shows are always, uh, they do very well. Their productions are really nice. It runs really smooth. We love doing it. We really do. And uh, you know, shout out to Alan Beck, the promoter who handles all of those. I we truly do appreciate him and any of the other promoters who you know do their best. You know, sometimes things happen and it, it goes. It's out of your control. I understand. Some people don't. I understand. But I also look at the intentions of the promoter. You know, most of the promoters get into this business on a, on a straight and narrow. They don't come into this business to try to be crooked or to try to get over on anyone. Uh, they start to kind of make those shifts when things aren't exactly going the way they want. So I, I still have a lot of love and respect for the promoters. And I always tell them all the time, you know, to talk to me. Let me know uh, whether they're booking with me or not. I'm still here to uh, to help out. Um... Right now it's pretty it's pretty early. I, I, it's pretty early. I usually do these podcasts around uh, close to midnight. It's now uh, 9:43. I actually started the po- podcast around 7 p.m. Uh, what was so crazy is that um, I had a disconnect on my mic. I didn't realize it. And after I did the whole podcast, it was a good one too. You guys missed it. That shit is it's gone forever. <laughs> um, anyway, when I went to play back, uh, good thing I checked it. Make sure it, it played back. Um, it was blank. It was empty. So um, I wanted to get that out and then just kind of hit the sack uh, early. What's so crazy is that I thought, and I know why, because um, I just booked another flight for Texas, uh, the 28th, 29th. And that flight leaves here at 1.30 p.m. And I confused that flight with this one tomorrow morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm, I'm thinking I have all this time. I figure, okay, you know what? Let me take um, uh, Alcacel's a cold. Uh, if anybody knows about those things, they actually put you to sleep. So like right now, I feel like I'm really, really drowsy. Like I couldn't drive right now. I feel that much out of it. But I didn't realize is that my flight boards at 5.30 a.m. Now I'm about an hour away from the airport and I like to get there no less than an hour prior. So if we board at 5.30 and I want to be there by 4.30, then I have to leave here by 3.30. That means I have to get up probably by 2.30. Um, I can do three and then we have a half an hour, just got shower, clothes are already ready, we're already packed and then jet, you know? So, but um, I'm tired right now. I'm a little concerned about driving I'm hoping I feel better. I would never have taken this uh, Alka-Seltzer cold if I knew that we were getting up so early. So I screwed up there, and uh, I'm just hoping that we get to the airport safe and sound. Uh, I, I got into an accident once going to the airport. I was by myself in the car. It was a Susie show in Dallas, Texas. And what was so crazy was um, we had to postpone that show twice. First time had to do where if something came up and they hadn't locked down the event yet, so we had the freedom to change it. 
The second time was, I think it was the Ebola, when that Ebola kicked in and it went into like Texas and it, it, it was it was pretty scary, you know. Um, we didn't think it was a good idea for us to go out there. You know, we had to be in an airplane and it just really wasn't worth the risk. So we postponed it again. Promoters understood it. Some of the fans had a problem with it, but they got over it. They, they got over it. Um, but then we finally set up the date. This has been at least a year in the makings, and we do really well in Dallas. Dallas, for Lil Susie, is like a prime market for her. That's like her New York. I mean, she kills it out there. And uh, they broke all her records. So it's really, really good. Like, she could do her entire set, which is like seven songs, and the fans will know every single one of those songs, and they will sing every one of those songs. But anyway, on my way to the airport, I felt myself getting sleepy. This is what's so crazy. I felt myself getting tired, but I thought I'll be okay. And I was already at the airport. Like I was just gonna, I was on the main highway. <coughs> Over here, that is, um, I forgot the name of that freaking street. But anyway, so we're on the main, on the main road and I am, and I have to now take, turn a left into the entrance of the airport. And then from there, you know, you navigate your way through to the parking parking lot. Anyway, I remember in my mind, the light was green. I remember this clearly. I remember the light being green and me hitting the gas to keep going, all right? To cross the highway into, uh, um, into the airport. But then there was a horn barking that basically woke me up. And at that moment, I felt a car coming towards me and I braced myself. And sure enough, he T-boned me. And I had just put about, this was an Xterra I had. This was my first Xterra. I think this was like a 2005. I forgot, but I love this Xterra. And I had just put some money into it, into the body, into the engine, a couple of thousand, just did it. And this guy hit me, basically T-boned me. Now, my car got messed up. He um, he 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 bashed in like the whole front. It was really the front end, the front uh, right side wheel, um, and that was all that was damaged. And uh, the tow truck took it, took the car, and um, the guy the guy was a soldier. He was actually in the army, and he had his uniform on. And I think he was speeding, though. I really do. Uh, he was a brand new car, man. That's one of those. I think it was like a Charger or something. I forgot. What, I'm not big on cars as far as doing the. But I remember being like a real, like a big sports car, you know. And I remember him coming up to me and saying, you know, do the right thing, man. Do the right thing. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. I'm like, you know. But I haven't told anybody anything yet. The cops are, weren't there yet. But when they came, I was open about it, you know. Um, and they just had to do with the with the insurance. What was so crazy about it is that we had renewed our insurance policy for the car, and we accidentally were well, injured. This she accidentally put liability on it. Now we never put liability on our cars. Ne we never do because it's not that much money between liability and full coverage. I swear it's only God like eight dollars a month. It's like insignificant. So, of course, why would I risk it? But do you know that day when we called up um, the insurance company, they told us we have liability, that's it. Which means that our insurance will cover their expense, but it won't cover our expense. And since I was at fault, their insurance doesn't have to cover anything. So, it was crazy. It was a, it was a, a crazy situation. I ended up selling the car. Somebody, I sold the car as is for like 500 bucks. I just wanted to get off my lot. Oh, before that, I had the cops. The cops that came by, they were like, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. I said, but I need a big favor. I said, can you guys take me to the airport? Now, the airport was like right up the block. We were actually in the entrance of the airport. And they just had to take me to my gate, to my terminal. And uh, they agreed. <laughs> so, but... Now, I haven't written in the back of a cop car in many years, and it's changed quite a bit uh, 
actually the seat, the seats in the front are pulled back all the way. So you cannot sit in the back seat forward anymore. It doesn't work. You have to kind of sit sideways with your feet up on the seat. So it was real crazy. So I had to sit like that. And then they had to give me my bag, which I have a roller, a pretty big roller, enough, big enough for the um, overhead bin. Um, and I had to sit there with that on my lap. And that's how I had to get to the airport. <laughs> and of course, they stopped right in front of the terminal that I had to go in right where there's like the most people. So of course, they, it's a cop car. They're gaining a lot of um, attention at this point. So he, they open up the door and here I am, I'm trying to wiggle my way <laughs> out of the door. Uh, and they help me out and I tell them thank you. And they said, you know, good luck. And they left and I went inside and, um, and um, uh, checked in. When I got to my gate, uh, that's when I called Angel and I called Susie and I let them know what had happened, but that was still in route. I was still heading towards the show. So that was a good thing. Um, but um, I ended up having to call the insurance company uh, from the gate too, just to kind of give them a heads up of what was going on and uh, seeing, you know, what was happening. So, uh, and then when they, you know, when I got back, there was nothing I could do about the car. They, nobody was gonna fix it. My insurance company wouldn't fix it and their insurance company certainly wouldn't fix it. So it was basically um, all on me. Um, I haven't, uh, uh, yeah, I haven't, uh, I didn't do anything about the, the, the car. I just basically, uh, I sold it as is. You know, I had put an ad in the paper, I put a picture. What was so crazy though, is that the people who bought it came on my driveway and they actually fixed it. These guys are mechanics. And I remember them taking a freaking like a sledgehammer and they bent out the part around the tire and they did something with the tire itself and they were able to drive the car off of my uh, my property. So it was really crazy. I kind of like, I was a little upset too. I was like, damn man, you know, it's like, I think they just got over on me, you know? This was a, a I spent a lot of money on this car and then I just put another two grand in it. It's crazy. But anyway, so I did, I went after that and I kind of fell in love with the Xterras. If you guys haven't seen them, they're cool. They're kind of boxy. I got the ladder racks on top. They have that little bump in the back where the tire goes. Really cool. And then um, I went online. I wanted to buy another car, but I wanted to buy cash. So um, I work out of home. The only place we really go besides the airports to the stores, and that's it. We don't really go anywhere. We don't we don't do much at all, you know, outside of working. So I wanted to get another Xterra. I wanted to see if I could get one for cash, and I, I didn't need anything fancy. And I see one for 3500 bucks. I was like, oh, shoot. And I see the miles, man. The miles was only like, I don't know, 68. Was it 68 miles? Or 6,800 miles? Something like that. Some craziness. And I remember it was a really, um, yeah, 60,000. It was 60,000 miles. 68,000. 60, yeah, 6,800. 6,800 miles. That's what it was. And, um... I remember going to go see the car for the first time, and they gave me the key, keys. The car was like, it was spotless. There was no damage on it anywhere. And I asked the dude, I said, why are you selling this so cheap, you know? And he said, no one wants to buy an orange car. <laughs> and he was right, because the car was orange. But it didn't, it didn't bother me at all, because, you know, to me, a car is a tool, you know, like if you have a hammer, doesn't really matter if orange or black or brown, you know? So you just want to make sure that, um, you know, what you're getting, you know, that it works. So anyway, but uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Listen, I'm really done. I'm shot right now. I'm going to, I'm going to cut, I'm going to shut down and, uh, I'll be uh, talking to you guys tomorrow night um, from Fresno. Actually, I'll do the podcast from from my room. And uh, please tune in. Let me know what you think. Again, don't forget to share, comment, like uh, this podcast on whatever platform you uh, 
you listen, whether it's uh, YouTube or one of the podcast platforms. So, okay, guys. So be cool, be safe tonight, and until tomorrow. Good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.